Hi there friends and welcome to episode 12 of the tutorial sect. I'm Icon and in this episode we're going to construct our first agency in a city. We have already an agency at Mount South, which is going really decent and everything there is quite quite superb. The amount of followers is steadily growing and their belief is getting is bringing us new power for the sect. But there's also another way, uh, another uh, spot for creating agencies, and that's cities. Cities behave a bit different than these areas, so today we're going to do that, and I'm going to explain that, and whatever happens in between will happen in between, and be explained thoroughly. So, first off, I see that there's a need of spirit stone blocks. That's uh, it's making me itchy. Now, we will check out if there's anybody in my ranks who's a decent social person and not a good cultivator. Well, Bijen is the best person in that department. Well, it kind of hurts to give away another pair of hands, but I definitely won't be promoting any of those into the, into the inner disciplehood. So, well, I'm going to give away Bijin, even though he's really talented, but that's okay. So, City of Abundance, we assign our first, uh, our new abbot there. We need influence and wood for that. I didn't explain it uh, good enough yet, so... Influence is uh, created as a byproduct of your, uh, of your first agency here. If I remember correctly, it's because we do the charity work here. You gain a small amount of followers, appeal, or influence. So here, influence. And with that influence, you can build new agencies, basically. So we're going to assign Bijen to this agency. And now we get a, to get to kind of give it a name. So it's a tutorial city. Tutorial City Pagoda. Okay, there we go. So here we get now asked how many spirit stones we want to give our new out. The answer is quite simple, as many as you can afford. These spirit stones will be used as a resource on the way and uh, simple, simple, uh, a, a simple statement, which is not entirely uh, wrong, is the more spirit stones you give your abbot, the more followers your your agency will have from the get-go which is a good thing you want to have as many followers as possible from the get-go so let's see ruji is right now lazy and let's uh, give her some work i feel like adventuring a little bit more to mount shu and we want to acquire as much of that juicy, juicy Igneo Copper Ore as possible. We can create one more uh, series of, of these bars and then we need to slaughter new beasts because we don't have any beast blood anymore. One thing at a time though, and we can now try to do better, do more breakthroughs for her. And we have unlocked the Glimmer Cave. The Glimmer Cave is not the place I was looking for. The Glimmer Cave is a fire elemental place. So the Glimmer Cave is a so-called cultivation spot, or I don't know if they are so-called, but I call them like that. They are cultivation spots, and as we see here, they yield a high amount of fire energy. So therefore, a, a, um, a earth cultivator would be a happy person to go there and meditate. I'm going to explore that a little bit later. So for now, we're trying to explore that place and I'm doing what I can to achieve another breakthrough for our Missy here. 100%, wonderful. Okay, you see here the chi density is horrible of this place because we have only a low amount of uh, chi gathering items here allocated. But or not there's spirit wood available for us spirit wood at the far most uh, places to just increase the chi density is a very very useful method to increase the chi density of your area okay 
new breakthrough happened. Let's keep practicing. And the first couple of levels are always the easiest and most meaningless levels in the career of a cultivator. On lower difficulties they are quite easily acquired, on higher difficulties this can take a while too. But for now we don't have to do that much more. But what's uh, happening next is that our agency is being built soon. Alright, we have a limit reached on her, and that's breakthrough attempt. Oh, we can because we don't have enough chi. The regeneration right now is quite bad-ish. And we're exploring this area there. 40% success chance. Yikes. Lee doesn't like that too much. So we don't have that, uh, we don't have any new spirit wood right now available, so let's go hunt some more. You can also buy spirit wood from other sects, but, well, only do that if you must. There's basically two reasons why you need to do that. Either you don't have enough spirit wood in your region, or you want to keep those spirit wood trees, because they are providing a good spot to train your Alpid disciples at. Alright. Just spreading these, uh, these spirit wood logs where they don't uh, ruin the chi, uh, the, the elemental affinity. Alright. Also, the mentor is now helping her uh, with a breakthrough there. Ah, this event here is an event where you can gamble for a lifetime, but only if you have a couple of dice on yourself. So if you want to go for the gambler, be sure to give that person a couple of dice. Very important. Being attacked, and our agency in the City of Abundance is ready. Wonderful. One thing at a time. Let's first send the dog to deal with these infidels. So as long as it's only mortal people attacking you, the dog is all you need to, to stay safe. It's wonderful. It's simple, easy, and effective. Okay. So... City of Abundance. When you check out these uh, build the, the agency here in the town, it looks like uh, Mount South. Policy-wise, we're going for a charity as well, because this will... Well, you still get the influence even without the charity, whatever. But what's important about this is if you don't go for a charity, two things will happen. First, you will not allocate any followers. Your followers actually drop by a percentile amount whenever you don't do any policy. And you don't get those uh, nifty charity events which which increase your follower count. So you need those. Now, at a town you can build other buildings. We don't get to build these uh, resource gatherers in cities. Instead, we get to build buildings which are either unlocking new, dis uh, new policies which are mostly aimed at disrupting the work of the other sects in town because you can or you want to ultimately dominate the, the belief in that uh, town with your own. But you can also build a spirit master hall. We're, we're going to cover that today because it's uh, for me the most uh, important and appealing thing. The spirit ma master hall will give you a opportunity to trade influence for new disciples once per day, which is really, really good. We're going to do that in a, in a minute. So let's see, at Mount South, we can claim a couple of materials. We see there's 740 units of wheat and brownstone lying around there. I'm going to let them lie around there. They, they don't go back there. So what we do need though is wood. We don't have any wood left. Okay. Let's chop away some trees. There we go. Okay. 
They need tools for chopping trees. Okay. Let's assign somebody to crafting priority to make sure that the tools get crafted. There we go. We only have two disciples left. That's really not too much. But that's all we need. Okay, we have now the necessary wood. Now we're going to build the Spirit Master Hall. The thing there is the the amount of uh, disciples that block towards you is directly linked to the amount of followers in the uh, in the town, which means right now we are really really unknown there, and therefore we won't be. We won't be receiving too many recruits at one, at one at a time, at the same time. But it will be helping. It will be enough to help us. So, and now finally we have unlocked the Jade Stone Cliff. That's what I was waiting for. We didn't acquire any uh, fire ore here. We did acquire enough ice crystal ore, though, to work with that, which is also good, because eventually I want to have a wood cultivator anyways. Okay, so now, disciples will be recalled, because if you check this out, we're now at 100% exploration progress. Why should I explore here anymore? There's no reason whatsoever to do so. So instead, we're going to send our cultivators back home, and now we're going to see what we can do here. Heli and Hua was uh, one of my, is, is my sect leader, but her skill is lower than that of Zuruji. We can now use a couple of these items that we have acquired on our journeys. So I want to introduce you the power of Earth Flux here. So Earth Flux. If you check out the text, it is replenishing a large amount of stamina. It expands the chi reserve, increasing one's max chi. These items are always very, very desirable. But it's really important to notice these max chi expanders. Often they come with a warning, like uh, you shouldn't eat that if you are below golden core, for example. Take these warnings seriously, because if you don't, you risk the life of your people. Good example here is the sun pill. If I or shouldn't I have a sun pill from the get go? No. Oh dang! I don't have an item to demonstrate. Sun pills are my favorite example because they they give you a large amount of chi, but they explode you if you are only a weak golden core. Definitely explode you when you're when you're weaker than a golden core. Okay. But one thing at a time. Now, Jade Stone Cliff is open for adventure, and we're going to send we're going to send Ruji over there. Or do we? Yes, we do. Because I really want to cultivate that place a little bit. So Helion was already down the road with artifact crafting a little bit, and well. We might have only a, a stick here to fight with, but let's change something about that. Let's see if we can enchant something water elemental, but no. No, there's nothing I can use. Lotus Roots and Piers are the ideal candidates. Oh, look at that. We, we also acquired in the last episode some Ochre Essence and some Gnarled Wine. When you check out their stats here, the Gnarled Vine has a Gather Chi amount of 75 and a range only of 2. But 75 is insanely strong. So we can here just uh, place that item here and there. Thanks for that. So, uh, somebody who mentioned that I can just uh, place an item on a, uh, on, a, on a build pedestal. I didn't know. And the... Uh, the ochre essence being an earth elemental item belongs into the uh, metal cultivation room. These are just upgrades. Whenever you can, just try to upgrade the, the quality of your cultivation chambers. It goes a long way. It makes your efforts so much more effective to, 
to gain experience with all these things. It's really worth your time. Okay, so since Hellion is not able to... Since she's not able to increase her fighting power by creating a better artifact, let's see if we can learn something for the artifact power. So, well, she just doesn't have enough inspiration. Okay. Let's help her out with some inspirational trip. There we go. Search for Spurt. Yeah, now there is... Uh, at this location where we try to gather the Igneo Copper, we can also try to search for the so-called Spirit Root. You can only do that when you're on really good terms with the sect. The, so, the Spirit Root here is the Crimson Fruit, which is a very powerful fire elemental item. Since we're not really that uh, close with the uh, Blue, Blue Mountain sect, Blue Lotus Temple, we are not able to pull that thing off. We only want to have the Igneo Copper Ore from these people. That's enough for now. Okay. So, when we cultivate uh, our people here, I wanted to talk today a little bit about skills in a deeper way. Skill development, especially. Because uh, so far, you might have the impression that it doesn't matter which law somebody learns, because in, at the end of the day, you learn a law, and then you can learn all the other skills. Basically, it seems from this point of view, as if the law you learn only determines your elemental affiliations. That's wrong. That's why I want to talk about it. So, what is uh, in store in every law, law, which I haven't talked about yet enough, are skills which have these, um, which are multi-staged. You see the Lesser Luna form, the only skill up here at G-Shaping, has these three dots below it. And every single of these dots is a, uh, is a, well, an upgrade there. So, if we learn the first uh, stage, the so Luna form, base max G increase, artifact power increase. If we learn the second uh, stage of that, we get yet another max G increase. Oh, wait a sec. With quick, we need to talk about that in a sec. And uh, so on. There's even a third uh, skill, which is uh, the tool, which is uh, breaking the tool the borders of the tooltip, and the third level is usually the last level is super strong. Right now, we need to know two things. First off, to learn multi multiple levels of a skill, usually you can't only do that if it's a primary law. Like anybody who's not a primary student of the Sunflower Refining Law does not have access to the level 2 and level 3 skills. You need to tinker around a ton with late game mechanics to make this accessible to somebody else, which is possible, but we're going to talk about that once we reach subspirits. Right now, we need. there's uh, necessary to know that the main law you're studying is giving you the opportunity to, to specialize yourself somewhat. For example, here Hellion's uh, skill tree has these uh, has a lot of artifact mastery skills which can be learned in multiple stages because the Grand Chariot law is a fighter law. So the Doobie Chant level 1 gives you a no new amount of artifact power, level 2 gives you a, uh, well, I understand it correctly, you, you get a higher skill of artifact mastery. And at the third rank, you can even create a own legacy artifact, which is kind of like a unique item special to that law. Every law has legacy artifacts. Did I mention that this game is pretty deep? And uh, here you see the Grand Chariot Ultimate has the same mechanic, like uh, level 2 yields another big artifact power bonus, and the third level even gives you the option to equip another artifact, which is among the most powerful power-ups that the game has to offer because you see here these artifact slots you can have up to six they're locked you can't unlock artifact slots 
without laws or items, mostly potions and such stuff, which you consume. So an extra artifact is an insanely powerful upgrade for every fighter. So as you see here, this law is very specific in upgrading artifact powers. And uh, last but not least, the fire law that Zuruji is studying is very powerful towards stamina acquisition. <laughs> spellcasting. Spellcasting is the trademark move of this uh, of this law, and as you see here, the second level of spell fire yields two thousand percent of spell power bonus. Only achievable for those who are in this law primary. Okay, so I think we have now a picture why you, why there is a certain a certain appeal to be uh, to be on a certain law on on its prime. So there's always a, a specific build behind that which you can follow according to your primary law. The game wants you to, to follow your primary law as a as a idea for your build, and then you can pick the other skills from the other laws to, to garnish this and, uh, and make it more powerful. But in reality, most of the time, you just pick up as much maximum chi increasers as possible and as much uh, artifact power or spell power increasers in between. And the rest is uh, utility skills, which you, in, which you add if you have the inspiration. Okay, so if there are any questions about this topic, please, comment section is there for you. Now, let's talk about disasters. We have our first disaster, which is actually something I'm happy about, which uh, is a little bit uh, wrong, but I don't care. Once a disaster is in town, you can work for disaster relief. As we see here, our policy changes into brownstone consumption per day. Since we have a ton of brownstone on our stockpiles, we have 600 brownstone, we produce 15 brownstone per day, we can do this disaster relief for a long, long time. Now, there's two things which we can do. First off, always change the policy immediately, but there's another thing which we can do, and that's sending our most powerful cultivator for disaster relief. Right now, that's my golden core. I don't know if golden core is high enough to get the uh, successful achievement here, but as you see here, uh, the earthquake has the uh, has a timer like there's now 20 days of uh, disaster reparations and we need to allocate 2000 uh, 1000 units of brownstone here as we see here we're paying in um 20 per day and this is 380 brownstone in total this is not enough to fill up this bar completely and you need to fill the bar completely to be the big savior and the one who has uh, did the biggest relief on this uh on this natural disaster and then you get a really a nice reward but now we're going to wait until zeruji is back home first alien is a little bit uh lazy and i want to i want to let her study something exactly alien needs some artifact power skill Spectral Swordplay, 100% Artifact Power. Let's see, Artifact Power, 250%. Wonderful, we need that. Even if it's uh, a counteractive thing. Okay, let's do this. Because Hellion is not hitting hard enough with her, uh, with her crappy artifact. <laughs> Here we go. Now her artifact battle power is at 31. At least something. Okay. Now I'm going to send Halion to, uh, to to adventure around at Mount Lucian. Because I know that Mount Lucian yields a reward or a location which I really want to unlock as quick as possible too. Okay. Now let's wait until Zuruji is back home. gathering some more uh, igneo copper ore here and my earth cultivator has her next breakthrough wonderful and master zuruji is back home or mistress i should say okay 
So now we have that, and now let's send her to Mount South for an adventure. Only a quarter of a day is necessary. And I'm not sure if I remember it correctly, but if I remember it correctly, one wizard of a Golden Core Cultivator plus uh, Disaster Relief from day one should be enough to uh, do a full relief, but I'm not entirely sure anymore if I'm wrong or not. So here's Secrets Earthquake, and we provide Disaster Relief. Relief progress increased by 400. I don't think that this is enough. I think we would need a... Uh, we would have needed a Primordial Spirit there. The thing is, you can only send a Cultivator for Relief once, but we'll play it out. That's all that you need to know about the uh, Natural Disaster Relief. Do it as quick as possible and hope that you allocate enough points. <laughs> There's not more to know about that. Okay, but let's get back to this place and... We're going to see what we can do here. Meanwhile, another breakthrough coming up. As we see here, also, this uh, low quality room is already uh, powerful enough to yield the experience for her to break through and all these things. But the big issue there is you would want you want to uh, you want to achieve these um, a good quality of these rooms as quick as possible because you want to have a good environment for a solid golden core breakthrough because the uh, chi density of your environment really does matter a lot. But right now we we seem to struggle with gathering up enough. Igneo Copper here. It's not that easy, and the longer you, uh, you play the game, the more you will be busy with trying to um, allocating materials via adventuring. This is one of the core mechanics of the game. Sending inner disciples to allocate some materials for your sect. Big thing here. So, what I wanted to do in this episode as well was, of course, exploring that agency in the city. I kind of like covered it already a, a wee bit, but I want to I want to show you this feature that we have unlocked. So, dark steel war, not what I wanted, but okay. So now, waiting for a certain time. Here it's uh, twelve o'clock. Now, the city of abundance has now the uh, spirit master hall. If you click that, you can recruit people. Costs costs us one hundred influence. When you recruit people, you uh, today night. Wait a sec. <laughs> when you recruit people, usually you should uh, wait for a decent uh, time of day. Don't try to recruit them at night. I don't know why. The game is now thinking that I asked at night. Whatever. And here we see the uh, people that are flocking towards us. Their stats. And here, the, these, these skills only look like this if you uh, have the uh, mod installed, which shows you the level of people in, in this recruitment uh, screen. I'm looking for the levels and not for the uh, actual skill ratings, because that's a more descriptive um, number. I'm going to cover that in a sec, when I have a character menu to, to show you what I mean. What's now important for me, I'm looking for a chi first. I'm looking for people with a high level of chi sense. And after that, I'm looking for people with a high level of social skills. So this guy looks like we want to have him for now. I'm not looking for cultivators right now in particular, because I want to have some some hands to work at the, at the sect. So I'm recruiting these guys. And, well, don't want to recruit everybody. Let's leave it with that. Can't do that every day. So for for some reason, twelve a.m. Uh, mid the noon was not noon was not noon it was night in their uh, understanding. Here. So levels and skill rankings. So as you see here, you have a ability rating and you have a level. The level is kind of like your 
your your your your passion towards that your your talent yeah talent is the is the is the thing i want to say and while you might be at a certain ability rating with something the level behind that is way more de uh, descriptive there of course the higher your level the higher your ability rating because you learn faster but sometimes you have people with i don't know a high level like level 15 chi sense but their ability rating is uh, pretty low which might be misleading that's why i'm using the mod which shows you the level of the people and not their ability rating because the ability rating is just their momentary level where whereas the level shows the the limits of the speed of learning i hope that's uh i hope that's somewhat uh helpful for you okay so if there are any questions ask away because that's uh, all we had uh, we had in store for today i want to finish this episode here and well next episode i don't know yet where we're going to uh, start the next episode i want to talk about artifact crafting and medicine making soon because i feel like my sect is a, is a spot where we can deepen those topics a wee bit okay so feel free to ask questions or give me uh ideas what kind of topics you want to see covered in future episodes would be also very very helpful leave a thumbs up on that video if you enjoyed it and of course check out my channel i do daily content and i'd be more than delighted if you did a subscription on that channel and turned on those notifications have a good day and see you soon. Bye-bye.